Uh, thank you, Clem. Um, it's a pleasure to be here this evening to chair the discussion and to um, introduce each of our speakers. Uh, as Clem says, I'm a curator, I'm not an architect, uh, but I've worked um, quite extensively around the world, both developing exhibitions, collaborative projects, staging events at um, fora such as the Venice Biennale or the Milan Furniture Fair, installing exhibitions in Kazakhstan and Mexico. It gives you uh, quite a lot of insights, knowledge, and uh, equips you with some tools to deal with um, building relationships and getting things done. So I think um, this evening's con con conversation for me is about trying to sort of bring together that common ground in my world and, and, the, and the world of architecture and making buildings. Um, so I think we've got a lot to explore in terms of the unpicking the challenges and the, um, the positives of, of working internationally. Um, our first speaker is uh, Peter Barbalov, who's a design partner at Farrell's. Um, Peter specializes in concept design and design development across many sectors. He's led on several complex infrastructural projects, including uh, the Gatwick Master Plan, and is currently working on the Royal Albert Dock, which I think he's going to talk about in his um, presentation. As many of you will know, Farrells have worked in Asia for over 25 years, and they have offices in Hong Kong and Shanghai. Um, and they're the architects behind the 100-story King Key Finance Tower in Shenzhen, which will be the tallest building ever designed by British architects, which is one way to um, quantify things. Anyway, Peter. <laughs> Thank you very much, and good evening. My name is Peter, and I'll take you on a brief and certainly not exhaustive journey of uh, key themes which we have identified working globally over the last 30 years. Uh, internationally, uh, but also locally. Our international journey started over 35 years ago, uh, winning the competition for a landmark building to replace the existing peak tower in Hong Kong. And these are some of the drawings. Uh, the design incorporated the existing peak funicular station, which is over 120 years old, with additional retail and restaurant areas. This winning entry also allowed us to establish an office in Hong Kong, which subsequently became registered as a local practice and indeed continues to try today with large portfolio of projects. So this is how we started. Uh, one project, competition, 30 years ago. However, uh, the theme tonight is working globally, and I would argue that working globally is really working locally, both here and abroad, and the key themes which inform our global outlook. And the key global theme, a challenge, is the rise of urbanization which started over 100 years ago. Uh, this is a diagram which we introduced in the uh, FIRO's review a few years back. This rise of, of urbanization, what we refer to as the agricultural revolution, where we'll be experiencing a growth in the urban population equal to a Birmingham every year for the next 20 years. It's quite a lot of people. In 20 years, three quarters of the world population will be living in cities. This is what's shaping our current projects in both London and abroad. And I'll make the connection back to the, the original slide. And so I would argue that a key skill which transcends local boundaries is the art and skill of the city making, uh, making sense of the rich and complex networks which make the cities of today and tomorrow. It's a skill which is a global demand and that makes economic sense too. Uh, a recent study by the GLA Economics highlighted that London's architectural sector produces 1.7 billion in gross value uh, added, uh, which is a measure of the value of goods and services produced in 2015. The overall figure for the UK is 4.8 billion, so it's quite a lot of uh, amount of money of what we produce as architects. And that the UK as a whole is a net exporter of architectural services, exporting uh, about fourth. Uh, 437 million more than it imported in 2015. So it's really, we're talking about business. It, it is something which we can make, uh, uh, which, which is useful, especially in the current climate. So I'm going to show you a few projects which we have been involved over the years, working in Asia mainly, which show the city making expertise discussed above. The key themes in, in it, in them, and how this work has informed and continue to inform our current UK projects, but also our projects in, in Asia. I will also show you a few research projects which are informing our thinking. Again, a key skill to be globally competitive. Working globally is as much as exporting skills and expertise abroad as also bringing it back to the UK as well in the form of knowledge and investment and key to this is constant research and thought leadership. So I would argue that everything is connected. 
So the first project I'm going to show you is, is Kowloon, uh, West Kowloon. Uh, it's a project we started a long time ago. A key theme uh, which I want to explore in this one is layered city making. This is our project which started in 92 with a master plan for the area around the design by us Kowloon station. You can just about see the, the station. Actually, this is the build station and you can also see the, the, the CGI at the time. And, that's and our involvement has continued throughout the years to our current collaboration with Herzog and Murin to design uh, a, and the delivery of the M Plus Museum, which is a building to create a vibrant new quarter in Hong Kong. So it's about layering, it's about using infrastructure, it's about creating a new place. Another key theme, which I think it's, it's uh, part of uh, our discussion, is, is multi-nodal connectivity. This is our Beijing South Station which is designed as a multi-layered, again, as an airport. Uh, uh, arrivals and departures come on different levels. They're connected by a very complicated uh, way of, of structuring uh, the circulation. And they have these big spaces, which are a bit like the, the, the cathedrals of travel, uh, like St. Pancras. But it's been designed for over 100 million annual passengers by 2030. This is, this is a lot of passengers. Uh, another theme which I think is relevant to what we do in UK and also abroad is, uh, and we have explored, and it's actually very similar to the Shard, although the Shard was a bit uh, later than that. It's a uh, high density mixed use. Uh, this is the KK100 in Shenzhen, which is uh, over 440 meters and 100 stories, incorporates retail, office space, and it is indeed topped by a hotel. So you actually go all the way up and go down in the hotel in this particular building. Uh, another theme uh, uh, which, is, uh, in, uh, which we're exploring a lot in, in that part of the world is high density mixed use, relevant to London. It's another project which is in New Economic Center in Queen High in Shenzhen, where the ideas of layering and high density are exported, explored further with a series of high level connections between the various elements. And I know this has been done before in the UK and has some bit bad press, but it seems, you know, if you actually look at it, in a new, with a new way of looking at it, you can actually make it work. And this is an example of what we're building currently in, in uh, Shenzhen. Uh, however, not all our projects are at that scale. Some of our projects are also of more discrete scale. We, this is a project of a swimming pool in Kennedy Town in Hong Kong, where we have built a new swimming pool in what is a rather tight urban infill site. Again, the, the desire to build something which is uh, eye-catching is obviously uh, something which is explored in the culture there, but I, I do think this shows how you can actually in retrofit an existing site. And indeed, not just based around uh, Hong Kong and China, uh, as this project which we are working with ACON currently in Singapore is to design the Singapore terminus of the new Kuala Lumpur Singapore high-speed rail a project which is related to our West Kowloon, the DNA of the West Kowloon station over 20 years ago, and indeed the more recent Beijing South Station. But uh, one of the things I, I raised in the beginning is that research and thought leadership informs projects and helps promote design work, both nationally and actually internationally. This is our study for, with WSP on autonomous vehicles and the future of placemaking. Now, this slide is supposed to be uh, blinking, so you see the motorways in the city centers as they are, and then what happens if you actually take away all the cars. Unfortunately, the technology failed tonight. But uh, this actually is suggesting that we need less space if, we, if uh, vehicles, AI, uh, become autonomous. Uh, so this is uh, informed our entry into Reclaim the Streets competition, which explored the idea of a democratic street where the research was taken further to suggest a possible near future, where streets are freed from traffic models and hierarchy to allow their use by people. And of course, a logical extension of reclaiming the streets is also reclaiming the canals. Uh, so the, these kind of ideas and studies and research coupled with our experience has allowed the loop to be closed where, as I argued in the beginning, working globally is, re is really working locally. And global work should be indeed be, must help bring investment back into the UK. And in investment I mean uh, real projects but also uh, thinking. Um, so I'm going to finish with two projects which complete this circle currently, uh, there's many others, uh, where we work with international clients in the UK. The first is the Manchester Northern Gateway for the Far East Consortium, uh, which uh, is on this slide, and, uh, uh, and, and Manchester City Council as well, where we're master planning an area of about 155 hectares based around old rail infrastructure linking back to uh, the studies I showed you, and ultimately we will deliver about 15,000 homes to the next project, which is this slides for the same Manchester projects, to the, uh, to the slide which was referred earlier, which is the Royal Albert Docks, which is a 4.0 million square foot for ABP at the Royal Albert Dock. 
uh, ABP, a Chinese investor, Asian business ports, uh, which, which we're currently delivering about 600,000 square foot of phase one, and it's going to open next year. But what's really happening is that our, our knowledge and ideas in Asia is bringing the investment back. So this is the key point I'm trying to uh, say tonight. So our journey of working globally, which started over 30 years ago, has formed and being informed by our work to date, both in the UK and nationally. Uh, but key note, this is the exchange of themes and ideas, knowledge and inward investment, which working globally can enable. So as I said earlier, I think it's working globally is really working locally, and then working globally again, and everything is connected. So thank you very much. <laughs>